In this video, we're going to talk about plotting multiple lines or multiple things on the same figure or the same plot. We're going to talk about the concept of hold on, and we're also going to talk about the function subplot. So let's say I wanted to plot multiple things onto one figure. So let's say I had x is from 1 to 5, um, and let's say, yeah, so let's say I want to plot x and x. Okay, so in this case here, I'm just plotting a straight line where the y is also um, 1 to 5. And then let's say I want to then plot x and x squared. Okay, so in this case here, I'm plotting x squared. My, my x's are just 1 to 5 and my y's are x squared. So if I were to do this, what I would get is just a plot of x squared. My plot would just look like this, okay? Where this would be five, this would be one, this would be 25, okay? And that's because anytime you call a plot command, it erases the previous plot on my figure. So technically, this was plotted at first, so technically MATLAB came in and it plotted my x versus x, and then when it saw the other plot command, it just deleted everything on there and just overwrote it to the second plot. However, let's say I didn't want this. Let's say I wanted both plots on my figure. In order to do that, I have to use um, this concept called hold on. So hold on just tells MATLAB that, hey, keep that figure, keep everything on that figure the way it is, and just each time I plot afterwards, go ahead and just add it to that figure itself. So if I were to do, so if I were to add in hold on in between these two plot commands, so it's just the word hold, then space, and then just the word on, then now what's going to happen is the first time it's going to plot my x versus x, and then it's going to go in and then plot um, my x squared as well. And both of my lines will be on the same figure. And so a lot of the times people can get confused of when should I call hold on. So if I were to, if I were to call hold on before my first plot command, I'm telling MATLAB hold on and then plot something, but it has nothing to hold on to. I haven't plotted anything yet, so this does absolutely nothing. Okay. I have to call hold on after I have at least plotted something once, and then. If I were to call hold on afterwards, right, that would also be wrong because it would plot the first one, plot the second one, overwrite the first one, and then call hold on, but then I've already I've already done the damage. Okay. So you always want to call hold on um, after you've plotted something once, and then afterwards, everything after that will be added to the same plot. So what I'm saying is is let's say I said plot x, x, then hold on, then plot x, x squared, then plot x, x cubed, right? So since I called hold on after my first plot, all of the plots afterwards will be added to that same plot. In order for this functionality to stop, I would then have to call hold off. So if I were to call hold off, so in this case here, I would have a plot that would have x, it would have x squared, it would also have x cubed. Okay, now oh, that's a beautiful plot, I'm aware. Now, however, let's say I were, so the way the way that I turn hold on, hold on off is by calling hold off. So if I were to say, plot x, x, plot, I'm oh, sorry, hold on, hold on, then plot x, x squared, then hold off, and then plot x, x cubed. In this case here, I plotted my first one, and so I have x there. Then I call hold on, so now when I plot my x squared, it goes onto the same graph. 
Then when they call hold off, now it's telling MATLAB everything after that, just go ahead and overwrite it. So when I call this third plot, it overwrites all of my other plots. And so therefore my last or my plot at the end of all of this will just be a plot of X cubed. So at the end of all of this, let's draw another figure over here. I would just have a plot of X cubed. I would not have any of the other two plots before then because I called hold off. So another way of creating multiple plots onto one figure is separating the figure into multiple subplots. And we can use the subplot function in order to do this. So for instance, let's say I wanted to have a figure. Let's say I wanted to have a figure that had four plots in it. So let's say I had a plot here, a plot here, a plot here, and a plot here. Let's say in this top left plot, I had some, some line. Let's say in this other plot, I had some circle. Let's say over here, I had a square. And let's say in this last one, I had just another line, okay? So in order to do this, I have to use the subplot command. So the first thing I'll do is, so the subplot command, so subplot, has three inputs. The first one is the number of rows of my subplot. The second one is the number of columns of my subplot. And the third one is the index that I want to actually affect. So in this case here, I'm creating a two by two subplot, okay? And if I wanted to first start off with my green in that top left coordinate, so first off actually, the indexing for a subplot is not how you would think um, it would be because it's not the same thing as an array. So remember in an array, linear indices go down the columns and a subplot, it goes across the rows. So this is the first index, this is the second index, this is the third, this is the fourth, okay? So if I wanted to plot that green line, the first thing that I would have to do is I would have to say subplot two, two, so I'm creating a two by two, and I'm gonna start off with the first one. And then let's say I had some variables already there that had that data that I wanted to plot. So I could say plot, and I'll do it in green just to make that comparison. So x1, y1, okay? And now, if let's say for instance, I wanted to then move over to the blue line. I can do that. I'll just say subplot. So I have to move over to another subplot. So it's still a two by two. And then now I want to affect the fourth position. So then I can say plot. And I'll say x4, y4. Let's say these are just already variables that I created that have my data. So at this point in time, what my subplot will look like is it'll have a plot in this part and I'll have a plot in this part. And it'll just be empty in the other two because I haven't plotted anything yet but then I would have my lines like that. And so I can continue on doing this in order to plot my circle and my square, but each time I would just have to call subplot and the index that I want to affect, and then call the plot command in order for my stuff to show up there.